So with the recent announcement of Metroid Dread, the latest chronological game in the Metroid timeline, I thought it would be a good idea to revisit and actually beat the game that for the last 19 years was the end of the Metroid timeline, Metroid Fusion. I actually tried to, you know, beat this game before, but I got stopped by a bit of a brick wall that we'll discuss in due time. Now after beating the game twice, it's time for me to either reintroduce you or just plain introduce you to this honestly pretty good game. Sometime after the events of Super Metroid, Samus is seen helping a group of researchers check out the planet SR388, a planet she knows all too well after her mission there to bring the extinction of the Metroids, the most dangerous weapons and creatures in the galaxy. While leading the team, she is infected with a mysterious parasite. Now, most people probably would want to see a doctor after something like this, but Samus thinks it's fine and takes off in her ship. Oh, oh no. Johnson, quickly, give me a blowtorch, peanut butter, chainsaw, or anything. I have no clue how to deal with infected bird suits. The Galactic Federation does their best to try and save Samus, but since she's unconscious, her suit won't turn off, so they have to surgically remove chunks of it to get to her. Her central nervous system is completely flooded with the parasite she picked up on SR388. This parasite is called the X-Parasite. I guess because it's sort of X-shaped, but was this really the best name the Federation could come up with? Anyway, the scientists figure out that the Metroid is the X's natural predator, so they use the cells from the infant Metroid to make a serum that heals Samus back up to full health. Wait, they still have cells from the infant Metroid? But forget about that. A short time after Samus' recovery, Samus hears of an explosion at the BSL station. That's Biologic Space Laboratories, if you're wondering. I'm gonna let that name slide. The BSL is actually where the group of researchers were from, and while Samus was unconscious, they brought back the creatures they captured in parts of Samus' suit that was sawed off. Kind of odd that the suit parts were sent here of all places, but I guess the researchers wanted to learn about SR388, so the parasite is good research. I guess? Well, I guess not, because Samus hears of the explosion and rushes there to help. Of course, her ship is... Yeah. So she had to use a Galactic Federation ship. On the condition that she listens to and follows the orders of the digital CO on board the ship. Essentially, they gave Samus a leash and a digital owner to boss her around. Kind of weird condition for borrowing a ship to rescue people. Either way, Samus makes it to the BSL and her ship navigates her to the location of the explosion. Which was the same room her infected armor was stored in. What a coincidence! Also, get used to linking up to these rooms around the station. The CEO is connected to the station and will lock and unlock certain things, and try to force you into these rooms so it can order you around. You know, Samus is used to doing her own thing mostly by herself, and that's led to back-to-back -to -back successful missions. So what's with the... Leash... Maybe Ridley was a part of an extinct species? Still weird to keep the frozen remains of a criminal mastermind, though. But I guess he has always found a way to come back, so maybe this was just for insurance? But why would you keep him here of all places? You think the other creatures in here are considered extinct species because Samus blew up their worlds? Doesn't explain the space pirates, though. But. Whatever. Anyway, the explosion was caused by the X infecting the suit. The X parasite are expert mimics and are extremely intelligent. They can mimic just about anything biological or just about anything, honestly. You thought the Metroids were bad? Nuh uh, man, these things are the real deal. They even take the memories of their victims and fuse or mutate the DNA, making them ever adapting and ever expanding their destructive power. They even made zombies! The CO says we had to keep them out of the breeding chambers on the ship as they contain dangerous creatures. Also, Samus can now apparently absorb free-floating X-Parasites to get health, missiles, and upgrades. How, you ask? Well, she's part Metroid now, so yeah, it works, I guess. Look, if you want to ask questions about the science about a fictional group of parasites and this woman's ability to absorb them, that's fine, but I'm more worried about how on earth people got around this station without bird genes and a cannon. Seriously, does everyone else have to shoot these doors to open them? 
Are the scientists packing heat? Well, after downloading missiles, don't ask. Same as Vince, and we get to fight the first boss. Whoa, what's with the green? You telling me the station doesn't have these areas mapped out? Why wouldn't they? Or maybe these areas are purposely being left out of the map the CEO gives you. That's kind of sus- I mean, suspicious, right? Hmm. Well, we fight and defeat the first boss, and we learn that the X have infiltrated the first breeding chamber. That's almost a perfect copy of SR388. Hmm. I guess you would need that for biology research. These breeding chambers are where you'll be spending most of the game as you try to prevent the X from multiplying and gaining more power, as Samus herself powers up. So Samus takes the elevator and... Oh yeah, I guess it's time for your introduction. This is the Samus Aaron X, aka the SAX. Somebody's getting paid for these names. The SAX is what caused the explosion in the first place, and is pretty much the main threat for most of the game. This imposter has all your Super Metroid abilities, and is pretty much Samus at her best. And I'm sorry to say, it's hunting you down. You can't fight it. You'll get your chance, but for now, you gotta run. But lucky for us, it's kind of death. I SAID KINDA! A little later, the CO tells Samus there's still life signatures on the ship, and it could actually be surviving crewmate- Nope. It's the tutorial animals from Super Metroid. Wait, are, are they just faking? Are, are they imposters as well? Nope. We'll find out later that they're clean, but seriously, what kind of luck do these things have? Also, at one point, the X try to overheat the PYR area and are trying to blow up the station. The CEO thinks this is because they view Samus as such a threat to their larger population, even outside of the BSL, that they just have to kill her because she's just so dangerous. Hmm. Well, eventually Samus gets a call to return to her ship. When she gets there, we hear about her little friends being all safe in the ship, but we also learn that the power is out, and that Samus needs to go down to the generator to fix it. We'll come back to this part of the game later. After this, Samus gets a chance to really explore on her own for a bit, leading her to unlock the final red doors. The CEO scolds Samus for this as she wasn't ordered to do so, and also wonders how she was able to get powerful upgrades like the plasma beam, diffusion missiles, and the gravity suit. I guess I can understand being mad at the door thing as throughout the game the more colored doors you open the more access the X have to more areas. But Samus had to open the red door like she did the others. But what's with the surprise about the new upgrades? Some of these were even upgrades that the Galactic Federation seemed to have sent, but you just never said anything about. Do, do you not want Samus to be stronger? Well, after another order from the Digiboss, Samus finds a restricted area. And seeing no other way, she goes in and discovers... Metroids, including the infant and its higher stages of metamorphosis. This doesn't make any sense. Why would a governing body want to bring back the ultimate weapon in the galaxy? A species that's responsible for mass destruction and is responsible for incredible tragedies. Yeah, I guess that answers itself, doesn't it? The SAX shows up and yeah, it's freaking out, trying its best to wipe out all these infants, but it's completely overwhelmed. And apparently ice missiles don't work on these things. That's good to know. And wait, an imposter, venting. Suspicious activity. Dead crewmates all on a space station and we're about to get ejected? Is this an Among Us ref- I really haven't played Among Us, so whatever. Now somebody had better start explaining before I have the animals pee on your motherboard. The CEO explains how the Galactic Federation were cloning and experimenting on the cells from the infant Metroid. For peaceful purposes only- yeah, right. And yes, this explains things like the perfect SR388 replica, along with other sus stuff around this station. And yes, this is the reason the CO was so restricting with what and where Samus can go or do. Also, he tells us that another SAX is on its way here. Yeah, the one we just blew up with the Metroids is gone, but since the X reproduce asexually, there are no fewer than 10 of those things running around the station. 
Hmm. I wonder why you didn't tell Samus about that earlier. After the usual fight with Ridley in some form or another, Samus gains her screw attack back and makes her way to the navigation room she was ordered to go to. The CO says that the Feds are on their way to the station and Samus has been ordered to leave. You see, the Federation has taken an interest in the X-Parasite, including the SAX. They even stopped sending support data so Samus couldn't destroy the SAX. In fact, the reason the CO was so surprised about the plasma beam and diffusion missiles is because the Federation had sent those upgrades, but purposely kept them hidden from Samus as they knew she would try to destroy the SAX. Samus rightfully calls out the Federation. She says they wouldn't survive. As soon as they land, the X will absorb their knowledge and their power. They are too dangerous, and they will bring galactic civilization to an end. Samus decides to activate the self-destruct on the station and blow up the X on the station and the planet below. I guess the X didn't know about the self-destruct earlier when they tried the whole meltdown plan. But maybe the scientists they absorbed didn't know about the self-destruct switch. For security reasons, maybe not everyone was privy to that sort of knowledge. But there's a problem. The CEO has completely locked Samus in the navigation room. With no way out, she tells the machine to let her out. The CEO says it's been ordered to prevent her from leaving the room till the Federation arrives. Samus, in the heat of the moment, calls the machine Adam. Who's Adam? Samus Aran is a character that we know and don't know a lot about. But from what we do know, she's lost almost everything she cares about. One of the number of people she's lost is a man by the name of Adam Malkovich. I'm not a Metroid lore expert, and definitely haven't played Other M, which might be a good thing. And I can already hear all the corrections in the comments, and I welcome them, because I don't know everything and it's good to learn. But from what I do know, Adam was a good friend of Samus that lost his life saving hers. He was her CO when she was a part of the Federation. He used to call her Lady, which from anyone else would sound sarcastic, but he made it sound respectful to her. And she misses him. Samus Aran is a character who is always stoic, powerful, and does what she believes is right no matter the cost. She is the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy. But her stories rarely let her speak about herself. Metroid games usually don't have much story, and I'm perfectly happy about that. It's fine with me. The most Samus usually talks is to say her mission is this or that, you know? And remember, this is the last game in the timeline. Well, for right now. So we're used to her being like a weapon or just an avatar for the player. But to have her take a second in probably the most vulnerable state she's been in in years at least physically to briefly mention then full-on monologue about someone she's lost and how much that person meant to her. It's beautiful, honestly. At the beginning of the game, she remembers the last time she had a CEO, and that was Adam. And that's what led her to name the machine Adam in her head. She mentions him throughout the game, too, and when the CEO questions and insults Adam, Samus full-on defends him, saying that the machine would never understand Adam. The CEO mentions that detonating the BSL in high orbit wouldn't guarantee the X's extinction, and that Samus would have to change the station's orbit to destroy the planet as well. Which is kind of the same thing that Samus was going to do? But I guess the machine's way has the station a bit closer to the planet. Maybe that makes bigger explosion? I, I really don't know. But then the CO ends its speech with the phrase, Any objections, lady? The same thing Adam used to say. Samus doesn't have time to question this and heads off to bring the X's extinction, leading her face to face with one of the heartless versions of herself. Let's stop right here. And let me ask you what the theme of Metroid Fusion is. I remember I watched the Geek Critiques video on Fusion a good while ago, way before I beat the game. In fact, I had just beaten it for this video, and yes, I also rewatched the Geek's video to make sure that I was accurately stating his thoughts on the theme. Great video by the way, check it out if you want to. Anyway, I remember him going over the way Samus goes from very weak and feeling restrained in the beginning, to feeling powerful and free by the end. The game being about her finding herself again after the X infection at the beginning of the game, and although he's 100% correct and I agree with him on the theme, I don't think he goes far enough. I think something in this game broke Samus, like really broke her. 
Maybe it was the infection and the surgery ripping to shreds and mutilating the Varya suit. One of the few things her adopted family left her. Maybe it was seeing Ridley's corpse and coming to the realization that their fight might never or already has ended. Maybe it was seeing the return of the Metroid being brought on by the people who not only ordered her to exterminate them, but the same people she wanted to protect from them. Maybe the realization of the infant Metroid saving her life twice over. Maybe the introduction of another galaxy devouring threat. Maybe it was the fact she had to look herself in the eye and be in the shoes of those, whether justifiably or not, she destroyed. I think something broke this time. And maybe the reintroduction of Adam into her mind at the beginning of the game is what helped her to remember and evolve who she is. Or maybe I'm just looking way too deep into this. I was making Among Us references a bit ago. This has gone off the rails. Oh, I have to be full of hot air. Honestly, what was that? But do you mind if I continue a bit? I know I should have put the whole hot air thing after this next part. But I'm reading what I'm writing, and I had to take a second to question myself on this meme field analysis of a 19-year-old GBA title. One thing I always liked about Halo 4 was the idea of who's more the machine, Chief or Cortana, which probably is not even applicable to Fusion. But it kind of is, maybe, since Samus has to fight a heartless version of herself, and maybe she reflects on her actions in the series so far. Or at least her relationship with the Galactic Federation. She's been their weapon for like a while. Even when she's not like a part of the Galactic Federation, she still takes their jobs and does all their missions for them. I mean, she literally destroyed the Metroids into extinction for them. And not only do they bring the Metroids back for their own destructive purposes, they also try to get a heartless version of Samus. They also try to capture and get that. For their own destructive purposes like come on samus you cannot trust these people don't be their weapon also hopefully samus and adam have a chief and cortana kind of buddy cop thing going on in dread i just think that'd be pretty neat back to the climax so it's the final showdown between samus and the sax she wins and now the sax is the one running away the station is set to blow with sr388 being destroyed along with it but when samus gets back to where her ship's supposed to be it's gone, and now a giant Omega Metroid, which was foreshadowed by the way, is here. What a sissy butt- Ow! Ow! Alright, enough Among Us, I got it! But then the SAX shows up, and since it has all the Metroid killing power already in its system, it can easily beat the... Well, I guess not. Luckily, the SAX has given up on life, so Samus can finally reach her full unlimited power- Nope. Not unlimited enough. Well, let's finish this up quickly. The Metroid dies and Samus' ship returns and escapes the BSL and the destruction of SR388. But wait, the ship can only be manually controlled. Could Adam still be a lot? Nope. The animals did it. Well, this isn't the first time they've flown a ship. Welp. All's well that ends well, Samus is at her strongest in the series, Adam is a computer, Samus throws those stupid animals into the sun to see how lucky they truly are, and something about getting sued. Who cares? Story over. Give me dread! I can wait. Well, we might as well talk about gameplay. Actually, Fusion is pretty different to other 2D Metroids. You see, with AI Adam over here, we are extremely limited as to where or when we can go places. Now this isn't entirely new to Metroid, they've had a few instances of this before, but never to this extreme. And you know what? I can live with this. They wanted to tell a story where the player feels limited, so you make the game limiting. That's good. I like that. I'm usually someone who doesn't like when the story gets in the way of gameplay, but when they're working together and it's flowing nicely, I can make peace with it. But Fusion? Goes a bit overboard with some of this. Now as you collect upgrades, you're going to want to go back to previous areas, right? Well, sometimes Adam locks the doors with no explanation and just prevents you from backtracking, and that's fine for early game. 
But by the end, when Samus is supposed to be independent, we still can't go back to some areas, leading me to believe that these areas are only unlocked at certain times, and if you don't go to that area during that certain time, you ain't getting the upgrade, which sucks, because you do get a chance to head back for a second trip in some of these areas for the story, but you won't necessarily have the certain upgrade to get all the hidden items, and all that diminishes my opinion, because even if this game is more linear, it's still a Metroid game. Now, maybe I'm just missing something, like maybe there's a way, but it's very hidden. This game actually stumped my progress a couple of times because of hidden paths you're supposed to take being a bit confusing, especially if you killed an enemy or something. But that's what comes with the area when you play a Metroid game. I can live with that. So maybe that's how it is. There's just a secret path I have to find. Well, maybe, but if that's the case, why haven't I found a single one of those secret paths on my two playthroughs of this game for this video? It's not like I'm not checking most quarters, I even found more items on my second playthrough. Something I did notice is if you go back to your completed save, you can actually go back to all the areas. So I thought maybe it's just stupid like that? But no, you can get 100% before you beat the game. I think? I'm still really confused after looking it all up, but why have it be this convoluted in the first place? Going around collecting items is a huge thing in Metroid, and to have it be so limiting is just too much. You're affecting the fun of the game at this point, and look, I'm not the type to complete every game and get all the items, but with Metroid, the whole point of the game is your power is tied to your exploration. So if you're too weak, that means you haven't explored enough. So the whole limiting your exploration in the Metroid game affects the difficulty and that happens. The bit after Samus leaves her ship for the second time to turn on the generator is a jump in difficulty and is what kept me from beating the game when I first played it. That stupid spider and its ability to combo you to death. Oh, but the game was just getting started. Because after I finally overcame that brick wall of difficulty, I got hit with a city block. The combo, the SAX chase, those stupid bugs, the plant Chozo statue, and topping it off with Nightmare? This is just a revolving door of pain. It's kind of frustrating. Luckily, the game mellows out a bit with the difficulty after you get the plasma beam and gravity suit. But man, this section just comes out of nowhere, and Nightmare is so awkward. His hit points are awkward to hit. Well, mostly just the face, the little tail thing's not too bad once you start using the plasma beam. But anyway, his arena is awkwardly small. I almost questioned if they playtested this guy. He just flies around super fast and super slow. It's crazy. And I guess he can't turn around at all. Like, every time you see him, whether it's him or his shadow, he's facing the same way. Nightmare is a nightmare. Of game design! Ah! I got him! Eh, that's a bit harsh. It's not that I don't like difficulty, it's just like, I feel underprepared for the spike in this section. Sure, maybe the developers thought you'd probably have more upgrades and that would have softened the blow of a lot of this, but I didn't. And I had no idea when or if I could go back and get them. I did have an easier time for my second run, but that comes with already knowing patterns and I also found more items. For both runs, I only found a little over 50%. I did eventually find strategies to beat most of these bosses, though. But hey, you're a poor man making big noise, something street taking on the world one day. You got blood on your face, you big disgrace. Somebody better put you back into your place. Ow! The Omega Metroid ain't too bad, just try to kill it quick because, it, you know, you're being timed. And the other bosses in this final section, Ridley and the SAX, aren't bad either. SAX is simple when you get down the pattern of running, shooting, and dodging side to side. And Ridley is similar to his fight in Super Metroid, but easier. Oh, by the way, be careful about the cores that show up either as their own boss fights or after another boss. These things hurt, especially the beam ones. Now something I do like was how the beams and the missiles are stacked together. In Super Metroid, you couldn't use all the beams at once, and now you can. You do miss out on the special stuff with the power bomb, but I never really use that stuff myself. Uh, you know, other than just to like test it out. Quick side note, I did not know you could pause the game and combo the other beam effects into another charged power bomb combo. I'm honestly not sure if this makes the combos any more useful, but it's honestly stupid cool. 
And I love when messing around in the game just shows you stuff you didn't know was possible. Super Metroid is just incredible. And having just one powerful missile is way better than having two separate ones with their own ammo. A lot of stuff in Fusion was streamlined for the better. You don't have to hold a button for the Shine Spark, and missiles can be activated by just pressing the R button. Could have used a new scanning visor or something to help find some stuff, but Adam probably would have forbade it, so I get why it isn't here. Sadly, the wall jump was nerfed, but it really wouldn't have been that useful to wall jump on the same wall in this game anyway. By the way, there are still sequence breaks in this game, or at least a sequence break in this game, and that's really cool. But now I'm kind of worried they made Fusion to be too airtight, you know, to prevent sequence breaking. Please developers, if you find any, please leave them in dread. Oh, if you don't know, sequence breaks are when you skip major portions of a game or get items early. It's huge in Metroid and I hope they have some in dread. Oh, you know before how I said you can continue from a completed save? Well, you can also start over as well, and I think that just gives you the little you have this much of blank item little indicator on the map. I've also heard some other changes, but I honestly don't know. I do, however, know that they got rid of the dropping multiple bombs when you charge your beam. I kind of missed that, I can live without it, but it was still missed. But with all that being said, I did definitely enjoy my time with Fusion. And I've heard some claim it to be their favorite Metroid game, and I can see why. It's good. Really good, but it gets in its own way too much. That story is probably the best in the series, but it being so strict about itself is what really hurts the game. I want to explore, but Adam doesn't let me, and that narratively makes sense? But come on, by the end, you guys could have loosened the leash a bit. And before the difficulty jump in the generator, I remember the game saying the X are becoming more dangerous and hostile. But that doesn't excuse you guys turning up the dial this much. And when I looked up to see if anyone else was having the same problems like any of the problems I had with Fusion, the answer was almost always a yes, and 9 out of 10 times, I saw this sort of comment under it. We've all been there. Which means that these problems are pretty prevalent. Fusion is flawed, but it's still an incredible game, and to be honest, all games are flawed. I mean, look at Super Metroid. I love that game, but it could absolutely use some buffering out with a remake. I get the hesitancy, guys, but I'd still like to see a remade or possibly retooled version of Super Metroid. It could be interesting. But hey, we are getting a new Metroid this year, and I can't wait for Dread. I'm still shocked that they are actually making it. Can't wait to see what Samus and Adam are up to. And please let this sell well, Metroid deserves it. Hopefully that Switch effect comes at Metroid Dread in all of its money-making glory. Oh, it's called Metroid Fusion because the X can fuse the DNA of its victims and Samus is a fusion of like three different kinds of DNA. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty clever.